what if I told you there was like this potential weapon against cancer, right? Yeah. And it's hiding in plain sight. Okay. And it could be something as common as like the vitamin C in your morning orange juice. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of crazy, right? Yeah, it does seem a little counterintuitive. We yeah. tend to think of these big medical solutions. Right. Not things that we can just pick up at the grocery store. Exactly. Yeah. But stick with us on this one because today's deep dive okay. is going to take us down a really fascinating path. It sounds good. So have you ever heard of a guy named Anton Karaya? Vaguely. Wasn't he a police officer? Yeah. In New Zealand. Okay. And he was diagnosed with really aggressive leukemia. Right. And was told he had only weeks to live. Oh, wow. Imagine getting that news. Yeah. And conventional treatments weren't working. So he was sent home, essentially, to say goodbye to his family. Oh, that's heartbreaking. It is. But here's where it gets interesting. Okay. A year later, Anton was back on his feet. Wow. Running, looking incredibly healthy. Really? He credits his recovery to high-dose vitamin C therapy. Wow. Is his case unique? Are there others? Well, we also came across the story of Graham Gager okay. battling prostate cancer mm -hmm. and conventional treatments. Again, not really helping him much. Right. So he started vitamin C infusions. Okay. And after that, he saw a significant drop in his PSA levels, which is a key marker for prostate cancer. These stories are definitely attention grabbing, um, but I'm sure our listeners are wondering, like, is there actual scientific evidence to support these anecdotal accounts? That's a great question. And let's get into that. Okay. So Professor Marguerite Vissers, she's a researcher at the University of Otago, mm -hmm. has been doing some really interesting work in this area. I see. And her team looked at mice with tumors. Okay. And what they found was those with higher vitamin C concentrations in the tumors actually had slow way cancer growth. Professor Visser's research is so important because yeah. they're really trying to delve into the why. Right. You see, we usually think of vitamin C as an antioxidant, right. which protects our cells from damage. Exactly. But what's fascinating is that at high doses, vitamin C seems to do the opposite. Mm. It acts as a pro-oxidant. That's wild. Yeah. So it's like vitamin C has but, a split personality when it comes to cancer then. Yeah, you could say that. So what are the implications of this pro-oxidant effect? Essentially, it could mean that high-dose vitamin C could help generate hydrogen peroxide within the body, okay. which is actually toxic to cancer cells. Wow. There's even research suggesting this high-dose vitamin C might work by cutting off the blood supply to tumors, oh, effectively yeah. starving them. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. It makes you wonder, if there's this potential, mm -hmm. why isn't everyone doing this? Right. What's holding back high-dose vitamin C therapy from becoming more mainstream. Well, you've hit on like some of the biggest hurdles facing high dose vitamin C therapy. Okay. One of the main challenges is funding. Right. For those like large scale clinical trials that are needed yeah. to really prove its effectiveness. So how much are we talking about here? Like what would it take to get these trials off the ground? Professor Vizers estimated that conducting, you know, really robust human trials. Right. The kind that would really convince, you know, yeah. The medical community yeah. would require around a million dollars. A million dollars. That seems yeah. surprisingly achievable, I guess, considering, you yeah. know, yeah. the potential benefits that we're talking about. Yeah. So why haven't we seen those trials? Well, securing funding for research that kind of challenges. Right. Conventional medical wisdom can be incredibly difficult. Yeah. There's often skepticism about anything that yeah. falls outside of, you yeah. know, yeah. traditional treatment approaches. So it's like trying to convince someone to invest in a revolutionary new form of transportation when they're perfectly content with their horse and buggy. That's a great analogy. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another factor at play here, too. Okay. Patentability. Right. Vitamin C is a naturally occurring substance, right? Yeah. It's not like a new drug yeah. that a pharmaceutical company can patent right. and then sell exclusively. Right. So there's less of a financial incentive for them to you know, exactly. put the money behind it. Yeah. But let's say someone listening to this yeah. is really intrigued. Mm -hmm. Could they just start taking high doses of vitamin C supplements on their own? That's really important to address. Yeah. So we've been talking about high dose intravenous vitamin C therapy, right. which is very different uh. from taking oral supplements yeah. to reach the high concentrations needed right. to potentially impact cancer cells. Yeah. Vitamin C needs to be administered intravenously okay. under medical supervision. So this isn't something you can just like 
DIY at home. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. It requires working with, you know. It does. A, medical professional. Absolutely. Okay. And it's not about replacing conventional cancer treatments entirely. Right. Remember Anton and Graham? Yeah. Their stories highlight the importance of like a holistic approach. Okay. They both made significant lifestyle changes, mm. particularly with their diet, right. alongside the vitamin C therapy. So it's about looking at the bigger picture of your health and well-being. Exactly. And not just focusing on this one right. single treatment. It's about recognizing that our bodies are complex systems. Right. And addressing something like cancer often requires that multifaceted approach. Hmm. High-dose vitamin C therapy could be a valuable tool in Ram. that approach, but not a magic bullet on its own. Right. So. We talked about, you know, the potential here, yeah. but also these hurdles that it's facing. It really feels like we're at a crossroads with this. Definitely. Yeah. What do you think needs to happen for high-dose vitamin C therapy to kind of gain wider acceptance? Well, research is key. Okay. We need those large-scale clinical trials right. to really, I think, understand its effectiveness mm -hmm. across, you know, different right. cancer types and stages. Yeah, we need to move beyond those individual stories. Yeah. Like Anton's and Graham's, mm -hmm. as inspiring as they are. Absolutely. And get, you, you know, know, more robust scientific data. Exactly. And we need to figure out the best approach. Right. Like, what are the optimal dosages? Right. What's the frequency yeah. of intravenous administration? Mm. You know, it's like fine-tuning a recipe okay. to get the best result. And wouldn't it be amazing if those results included fewer of the harsh side effects that often come with those traditional treatments? Absolutely. Yeah. Imagine a future where treatment is less toxic. Right. And focuses more on improving a patient's quality of life. Yeah. I think that's a future worth fighting for. It really makes you think, what other, like, possibilities are out there? Yeah. What other, like, yeah. simple readily available substances mm -hmm. might have this right. untapped potential. It's like we've just scratched the surface. Yeah. We're... We have to stay curious, uh. keep exploring, be yeah. open to these new possibilities. And right. Even if they seem unconventional at first. And that's what the deep dive is all about, right? There you go. Taking a closer look at things we might take for granted mm -hmm. and uncovering the surprising truths that are hidden beneath the surface. Exactly. Sometimes the most groundbreaking discoveries come from the most unexpected places. So the next time you're, you know, enjoying that glass of orange juice. Yeah. Just remember, there might be more to that vitamin C than meets the eye. Right. A lot more. It's a reminder that the world is full of surprises and there's always more to learn. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us on this incredible deep dive into the world of vitamin C and cancer. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And until next time, keep asking questions. Keep exploring and never stop learning.